the full fast challenge. Thank you. Lord, thank you for your love and grace. And thank you for the blessing of your word that shows us your truth, prepares us God, to speak your truth. And we ask for open hearts to hear that you would speak to us today, that you would love it. Children of your church here in Kelsey. Bless Robert for your mind and the words that he wants to lead us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, seekers. Again, it's all good to be with you. And uh, again, our thanks to Joe Sanchez for helping prepare this lesson. And our lesson today is the job of living as holy people. So, Pastor, when you think in terms of are, are we holy? And then are we living as old people? What does that mean? And so we'll, we'll discuss that in more detail here. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, this is the third Sunday of Lent. And today our scripture is from Leviticus 19, verses 1 through 18. It's March 7th, 2021. So the book of Leviticus. An Old Testament book was written about 1450 BC, and the author is Moses. The purpose of the book was to outline the worship duties for the priests and Levites and to provide a guideline of holy living for the Hebrews, to provide a general guideline as to live, how to live by. But so the scripture setting, Moses leading the Israelites on the land of Egypt and the house of bondage was no small task. Some scholars conservatively suggested that there were some two million people in the mass exodus. So he's in charge of leading out two million people. At Mount Sinai, God handed down to Moses the Ten Commandments, and in addition, the other laws and statutes for everyday living. God instructed the Israelites on how to live as holy people. So these laws would establish Israel as a holy nation and set a moral focus in the lives of the people for all nations to see. And and uh, uh, people living in a holy way, they're uh, Showing gratitude to the Lord. And, and Pastor, that's what we do today in, in, in the way that we express our, ourselves, our behavior, is we're showing gratitude to the Lord. And, and so, other people, our neighbors and other loved ones, and, and people that may not even know us very well, so they can appreciate how we live and, and thinking in terms of God's blessings. The pastor's definition for holiness is a quality of perfection sinlessness and inability to sin that is possessed by God only. So as Christians, we are called to be holy. But this does not refer to our nature. Instead, it is a command of our practice and our thoughts. So it's a matter of the heart. We are to be holy in obedience, as uh, described in 1 Peter chapter 1, 15. So God has made us holy through his son, Jesus Christ. And then, uh, Pastor, in terms of being holy and, and what it means as a Christian and a believer, how, how do we apply that to our everyday lives? Well, we talk a lot about civil existence, but I think that's a big part of why we do this. Prayer, worship, scripture reading, all these, all these things, uh, which we're studying Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, by the way, Bible study. Good morning, Lord. Uh, good morning, Grace. Uh, um, yeah, I think it's some practices that help us um, direct our attention to God first. And, and out of that, like you said, out of that the communion that we have with God comes our holiness. What changed my mind and changed my perspective completely uh, when I first learned that we hear, be holy as I am holy. And we hear that kind of as a, a directive, like, do this, but there's a strong sense in, in scripture when God says that, that God's not saying, Hey, now be holy. What he's saying is, You are holy because I'm holy, and it's not that it's not that there isn't anything I do necessarily, but it's actually who I am already because of the holiness of God. God has already seen me as holy, so that it becomes not, not just a mandate, it becomes an identity. So that then we we want to I want to live into that identity. I want to I want to make sure that my life lives up to that sense of holiness. That's what we we quote from Peter, and Peter says, you know, live life worthy of the calling, right? The gospel. And so I want my life to 
to reflect that sense of holiness. And how do I do that? You, know, you pray about it. It's on my own. I'm not very good at it. Yeah. Uh, I need scripture because my own idea is going to take me somewhere else. But if I can see <clears throat> the truth of God, then, then I can see more of that, that truth that God wants. Yeah. Because I also see it as a gratitude to the Lord, the way that we live our lives, we try to be holy and to expressing our gratitude to the Lord for the blessings and the life that He has given us. Yeah, if you know, if you're not grateful, then then what are you doing? You might just be trying to get in good with God and trying to kind of check the boxes off. And that's that only takes you so far. That one has so much meaning. It's pretty superficial. Yeah. But if you're responding out of what you've learned about God, then I think that takes you where God wants you to go. You open yourself up to to understand what that holiness is. Well, thank you, Pastor. Yes, sir. And Pastor, just a way of reminder, uh, we have a definition of what is Lent. So a 40-day period between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday is meant to be a time of repentance, usually accompanied by some form of prayer and fasting. And these 40 days are set aside to praise and worship the Lord to read the Bible more and to pray more often. So the purpose of Lent is to the preparation of the believers for Easter through prayer, repentance of sins, giving, and self-denial. Mm -hmm. And so this is the third Sunday of, of Lent. If after we move on to our lesson, the purpose of our lesson today is to understand what it means to live as God's holy people. So living as God's holy people as we're discussing. So some background information in today's lesson, we will consider what God called to be holy, meant for the Israelites during the Sanjur in the wilderness. Believers are holy because of our relationship with God. We do not attain or earn holiness on our own, Pastor, as you had just described. God calls us holy because God is our creator and claims us as children created in the divine image. So when we discuss these ancient ceremonial laws and commands and seek to listen with our hearts, to get a clear picture of the character and nature of God. And Pastor, we'll, we'll move on here to our scripture reading from Leviticus 19. And we'll start off with a, a Leviticus 19, verses 1 through 10. So holiness and personal conduct. So the Lord also said to Moses, give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God and holy. Each of you must show great respect for your mother and your father. You must always observe my Sabbath day of rest. I am the God, I am the Lord your God. Do not put your trust in idols or make metal images of gods for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a peace offering to the Lord, offer it properly so you'll be accepted by God. The sacrifice must be eaten on the same day you offer it or on the next day. Whatever is left over until the third day must be completely burned up. If any of the sacrifice is eaten on the third day, it will be contaminated, and I will not accept it. Anyone who eats it on the third day will be punished for defiling what is holy to the Lord and will be cut off from the community. When you harvest crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your field. Do not pick up what the harvester drop. It is the same with your grape crop. Do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vines. Do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground. Leave them to the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. The pastor, there was some instruction for the Israelites to follow. So after commanding, you must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. And God offered a list of instructions following that command. So these instructions are about our relationship with God and with other people. And, and, and Pastor, that's how we can uh, apply this information, these instructions to our lives in, in relationship with other people. So by being holy, faith, and conduct, Israel will be set apart from the other nations. So God wanted Moses and the Israelites to understand that these rules of holy living would identify them as God's covenant people. That's to another discussion one, but the point there, that God wanted this group of people to be identified as holy people. 
And, and Pastor, what do you think in terms of God wants of us to be identified as holy people? Yeah, so you know, we have the same calling. Um, now, of course, you know, how we live it out is a little different, right? We don't burn, burn sacrifice like weddings like that. Old Testament stuff. Right. But the, 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 the principle is still there that you know, God wanted a people that he chose to be unique, to be, uh, I don't want to say special, but to be set apart, certainly, right? That's what the holiness is. Um, and that's some of the call that we have to be as well. So that we, we discern what practices we do or don't do. What we're trying to figure out is how is God asking us to live set apart? How, how do we how do we stand apart as holy? Not to give attention to ourselves, but you know, to show the world that this wisdom of God is the, the better way to live, the better way to understand God. And, and Pastor, when we live our lives in a holy way, and that's a reflection amongst the other people in the in larger community, and, and we serve as examples. Sure. And, uh, and I think that's important also. If, if the church is going to live in God's wisdom, how is the world supposed to see God? Yeah. It, it, that's our calling. And, and Pastor, also, I think that's our responsibility as Christians and believers is to show. And then not, again, to earn our salvation, but just the way that we live our lives to show our gratitude in, in, to the, the public of, of what it means to be a Christian. Sure. And, and I think that's you know, part, of, part, of the, part of the reason why somebody like me as clergy, as pastor, part of what I want to do is talk a lot about the goodness of God. Because, like you said before, that's what I'm against. None of this, none of this makes total sense if we're not grateful for who God is, for what God does. Then it's just a set rule of life, and you know, I need a part of an organization. But if it's a response, then then it's, it's recognizing who God is, and then who God wants us to be, what kind of life God wants for us. Right? So if we're grateful for that, we, we understand more, and I think we're willing more to to live that life that God wants for us. And, and that's a lot of times we think in terms of what does the Lord want from us here when we're living on earth? He gives us these guidelines for us to, to use in, during the course of our life and decisions that we make sure. and the way that we behave. And, you know, it's, it's, God. it's not that God wants to, God doesn't want anything other, anything other for us than eternal life and abundant life. So when God gives us this wisdom, it's so that we can have eternal life and abundant life. It's not God saying, I don't want you to have any fun. I want you. No, no, it's, I want you to have the real life that I intended. This is, these are the ways that you do that. Well, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, the next slide has the continued discussion from verses 1 through 10. So God defined and explained what holiness looks like and that holiness demands a relationship with God from us. So God commanded that holy people should have a heart for others and count your blessings and share them with others. And then God instructed the Hebrews to provide for those in need. He required that the people leave the edges of their fields unharvested, providing food for travelers and the poor. And as people of God, the Israelites were to reflect God's nature and characteristics and their attitude and actions and pastor, that applies for us also. Yeah, last point of yours, I think, is, is excellent. So, you know, if you read something like uh, Leviticus, you think, well, what do those weird rules have to do with me? Well, okay, maybe we're not called to live to those particular weird rules, but we are called to live in a way that reflects God's nature and characteristics and our attitudes and actions. Yeah. And I think I heard Mill sums it up of how to live a holy life. Yeah. We're reflecting what God has told us about himself, what we know of God. So. Amen. So, Pastor, we'll move on to verses 11 through 18 in Leviticus 19, the chapter. It says, do not steal, do not deceive or cheat one another. Do not bring shame on the name of your God by using it to swear falsely. I am the Lord. Do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not make your hired workers wait until the next day to receive their pay. 
Do not insult the deaf or cause the blind to stumble. You must fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not twist justice in legal matters by favoring the poor or being partial to the rich and powerful. Always judge people fairly. Do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Confront people directly that you will be not held guilty for their sins. And do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So, Pastor, one of the things that brings out in those verses is loving your neighbor and loving others. And, and we, we hear that repeatedly in the Bible and New Testament. And just in that passage, the, the whole passage that you're, you're looking at, it's everybody. Um, they just talked about family. Right, talked about your neighbor, like your little little neighbor. Talked about uh, foreigners, right? People you don't know, and so it's it's all people. You yeah, like about, about the poor, the rich, poor, and yeah. You like to kind of make these you know, distinctions between you know, who we can kind of express love to, but what that text tells me it's that everybody. It's, it's there's no boundary to uh, willingness that God wants us to have to. To share a lot, yeah. And in fact, in large part, also describe the moral code, moral code that we can use to live our lives on um, how to be fair with people and, and, and uh, not partial to some that uh, this has said, but it's a moral code that we can use. And he's given us instructions on, on how to live a holy life, yeah. Yeah, and so we can look at a text like that, and take some of those examples, but yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. And that's kind of hard part. Into sometimes because we also read about you know don't hold your 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 wage for your workers until the next day. Well, how many of us get paid twice a month or once a month, right? So um, it's not that you take every rule and try to apply it to what we do now, so that you can tell your boss you who know, he owes you money or she owes you money tomorrow if you work and you can't wait for the pay period. But we're taking we're trying to figure out the principle of what was God, what God was trying to give to the people yeah. so that we can understand those better, find ways to let those out as well. Yeah, so it, a lot of times uh, we have to think in terms of the old and the modern ways of, of living. So the old may have been, you get paid every day, but now we agree to a pay period. And, and, and so I, I think the Lord is saying there that if you agree to a certain pay period, stick with it right. and, and don't postpone it or act, come up with some excuse that you can't pay them. So, so in the business, then the point was to you know, justice, pay, pay your workers. Yeah. Uh, pay them what they're due and all that kind of stuff. So that then that principle becomes the principle we have today that pay your workers, pay them what they're due. Yeah, and, and the fee, a uh, uh, fair wage, don't you pay them the fair wage, don't cheat them. Yeah. yeah. So taking the principle, trying to figure out what the principle is of something that was written thousands of years ago. That made sense to a culture of fifty thousand years yeah. ago, and, and shape the who we are and what we do now around some of those principles. And, and Pastor, I think we have to do that a lot with the Old Testament. Sure. And, and, and lots of people get confused about that and, and use that as an excuse not to follow certain things or instructions or guidelines in the Old Testament. Yeah, we're we can be pretty. Um, it's kind of funny. We'll, we'll pick some part of the old testament that we get like look it says right there that this is where yeah. and we ignore us and the other parts right um that that say something else too that that we've decided doesn't apply to us so it's funny to me how we can sometimes decide what directly applies to us from the old testament and what does you know, pick and choose and we pick and choose <laughs> yeah so you gotta be careful with that the pastor some discussion points from verses 11 through 18 so God gave a series of you must not commands and gives a picture of what holiness looks like individually and socially. So stealing, swearing, swearing falsely, oppressing your neighbor, withholding pay to hired workers, insulting handicapped people, showing favoritism, gossiping, not helping or hating your neighbor, and, and don't seek revenge for must not do behaviors. 
Holiness involves loving your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus provided a summary when he said, love God with all your heart and your neighbors as yourself from Matthew 22, verse 34 through 40. And a person who strives to be holy reflects this in words and actions and is considered holy and acceptable to God. So as Christians, we're called to be holy. We do this by being holy in obedience. We require the Holy Spirit to fill us with God's holiness and power in godly living. So God has made us holy through his son, Jesus. And, and Pastor, by the way, with you here, so a person who strives to be holy reflects this in words and actions, as we have been saying, words and actions, not just not, not just agreeing to things and, and thinking that you're doing it. You got to, you have a responsibility to do it. And uh, it, and we are, as Pastor had mentioned earlier, we are considered holy and acceptable to God. So that makes a lot of people maybe feel uncomfortable that we are considered holy. <laughs> I say, well, we, we don't consider ourselves holy. And that's what, maybe that's what makes us comfortable. Yeah, we're considered by God to be holy. So if God needs to do us a certain way, it's not that God needs to change his mind about us, that we need to change our mind about what he says about us. Yeah. Pastor, do you have any questions before we move on to the conclusion? I have, and no, just some good mornings. Holy God and Naomi. So yeah, no questions. Good morning, everybody. Okay, Pastor. So in today's lesson, living as God's holy people is realizing that it is impossible without God. The first thing, it's impossible without God. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us with God's holiness and power for godly living. We can live a holy life by being obedient to God in all areas of life. And, and Pastor, that's one of the keys that we had discussed before about of being obedient to God. And, and that requires a lot of effort on their, our part every day. And, and we can only do that through the Holy Spirit's help. So, Knowing and obeying God's word is key. When we live in obedience to God, we are staying separate from evil. And the purpose of living a holy life is to glorify God and display the nature to those around us. So we had mentioned that before, Pastor. One of the, the main purpose of living a holy life is to glorify the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will produce Christian likeness in us and as we yield to him. We can live a holy life. And then, and Pastor, we had talked about uh, several elements, but also in terms of the community and the church community and helping each other. So that's an important point also. Yeah. So we have the benefit of being part of the body of Christ, fellowship with other Christians, and making ourselves accountable to them is a great source of strength in living a holy life. So as Christians, we are called to encourage one another in this matter. Remember that we are not trying to live a holy life in order to earn salvation. Living a holy life is a natural outgrowth of being saved by God's grace and filled with his spirit. It is also important to not give up after when we fail in, in, in our efforts. Our response should be to confess the sin and keep moving forward in our Christian walk. Romans 8, verse 1 says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So God's grace does not go away when we make mistakes. Pastor, I think that's an important point that we, we can try as hard as we must and, and, and do, but we're going to fail because of our sinful nature. But God will it's not tell us to go away because we fail. He, he, we have his forgiveness. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I've been thinking on this the last couple of days. Uh, went to a baseball game, several baseball games this week, making plans, turning. Uh -huh. And, you know, I have three major sports, football, basketball, and uh, baseball. Hockey is a major sport, but I don't like it. But anyway, sorry. Not um, down here. <laughs> not down here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's fun. Anyway, but as a three, baseball is one that I know will lose. So when I watch football, basketball, I usually turn down commentary. They, you know, I don't need them giving me the basics of it. 
But with baseball, I hear everything because there's so there's so many intricacies of baseball that I have, I'm just clueless to. But anyway, so I'm watching these games and I noticed something that I noticed before. It's you know if, if there's a throw that somebody makes when uh, third to first, what happens is as you, can, you can you can see the movement of the field. Uh, when a ball is pulled into play, something's happening. You can see players moving uh, to a certain formation. And in particular, the one that's really caught my attention is, you know, when somebody is going to make a throw, for example, from third to first, then there's somebody that comes behind that first base, that first baseman, the back to the right. The catcher automatically is trained to know it's my job to go back up that first baseman. Now, why would he do that? It's an overthrow in case somebody makes a mistake, right? It's an overthrow or something. The baseman misses the catch, then that person, the catcher right there, he's ready to back that person. And I'm sitting there over the weekend and thinking, that is, that's a great illustration of who we are as a church, right? As you're, you're reading the last part, you know, fruit of the spirit, that's what kind of comes to my mind, that that's what. That's our wisdom today, fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, self-control. Um, I'm forgetting some other ones, but you know. And sometimes we're we're good at those. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're better at one than we are the other eight, right? Or, or whatever the case may be. And God doesn't give up on us. In fact, what God does is give us the church to back us up so that when we are failing in one of those areas, we we can encourage each other. You know, go to the next play and get work so that the church becomes God's way for us to uh, to not quit. You you weren't, you didn't give a lot of self-control this time. That's okay. I was right here with you. And uh, I'm going to walk you through this way. You, you didn't really live a joyful this time. It's okay. I'm right behind you, right? We are doing this together. The church is God's gift, not only to the world, but also to us as well. To, you know, to help each other do those things. So I got your back. I hope you have mine as well. Thank you, Pastor. Absolutely. But Pastor, so living as God's holy people is uh, something that uh, we think about. And, and, and as we had discussed during the course of this lesson, figure out how to do it. Yeah. And, 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 and again, we we're reminded that the Lord wants us to do this and, and live that way. Linda shares, I always remember the faith my aunts shared with us, just in how they lived and loved others. We remember people's witness, right? Yeah. Uh, we may not remember the doctrine, but you know, the fruit of the Spirit, there's no doctrine there, right? It's it's how we live. That doesn't mean doctrine is not important, but it's not everything. My Aunt Mary is deep as pain and suffering, and says she often cried out, I need a senor, when she, we knew she looked to the Lord for help. Yeah. Again, to me, that's another example of you know, there's that there's that movement, right? That we're paying attention to that your witness encourages mine, your faith deepens mine, and we can't do that by ourselves. I don't know why we like to try. Well, thank you, Linda. And Pastor, we're almost out of time here. So yes, sir. Unless you have some more insider or input, we'll close with a prayer. Many says good morning. Good morning, many. Good morning. Many blessings. <laughs> many. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Okay. Okay, we'll close with a prayer. Holy God, we thank you for inviting us into your holy presence. Be with us as we accept our place as your holy people. Open our hearts that we may love our neighbors and live lives of holiness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So live as God's holy people. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Pastor. Good job. I appreciate it. It's a good word to hear. It's a good word for us as we get ready to worship. Um, that not only... God calling us to be holy. As we meet for worship. We are we are worshiping a holy God. One of the songs we sing every once in a while. Only a holy God. Who else can do these great things? Only a holy God. Right. So that's that's what we're going to do this morning. So I thank God for this time we've had already. And uh, we're in 1945. We're doing sanctuary. If you're joining us, by all means, come. Yes. Uh, we're still asking everyone to wear their mask. Uh, that has not changed for us. We still have the blue tape up. We're not, not changing. Uh, what we're doing right now, uh, but also you can meet us online on Facebook at 1045. So whether it's online or in the sanctuary, we'll see you soon. Have a good day. Thanks for seeing you.